2 Corinthians 7, 5. When we came into Macedonia, this body of ours had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside and fears within. What happens when you call 911? Okay, somebody comes to rescue you, right? Even if you call 911 and hang up and don't say anything, they know your address, they know the name of the person who owns that phone, especially if it's a landline, and they come to where you are. That's what happened out in Wheatfield when uh, the guy shot his parents and then he was shooting at the Niagara County Sheriff's deputy. Do you remember that? They had called 911 and hung up. And so they went and checked things out. Um, it so happens that within our own church, we have uh, three full-time firefighters here, my son Aaron, Damien Ringler, and Tim Newman. And they respond. You call 911 if you live in the city of Tonawanda or North Tonawanda. Uh, I was gonna say if they're on duty, they respond, but I know just from my son, he often responds if it's a big enough fire when he's not on duty. You call 911 and they come. We also have a, a North Tonawanda police officer that's a member of our church, Michelle Day. And we also have a Erie County Sheriff's deputy. Her husband, Adam, uh, works for Erie County. When you call 911, they come. They're coming. Even if you don't talk, they're coming. Why doesn't God work like that? Have you ever prayed, rescue me, please? Help me, and he didn't. I have. I came up with a few reasons, maybe, why not. Now, I want to reread 2 Corinthians 7 5. Okay? When we came into Macedonia, this body of ours had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside, and fears within. Now, let me give you just a brief background of the kind of things they were dealing with, okay? Here's Paul. He's trying to preach, all right, and get the word out. But there were fights and disputes in the church. There were false teachers in the church. There were people spreading lies about him and persecuting him and others. I guess I can relate to all of that. I wonder if you can relate to this. Being hard-pressed. Now, in 2 Corinthians 4, 8, it says we are hard-pressed on every side. And the words there mean like to take grapes or olives and just squeeze the life out of them to get the juice. He says that's what we feel like. I wonder if you can relate to that. Ever feel that way? Just every last bit of life and strength is being squeezed out of you. Rescue me and nothing happens. Why not? Well, I'm going to give you nine reasons. There are more. I'm going to give you nine reasons that may possibly be the answer to why God does not respond like when you call 911. All right? Some of these you're not going to like hearing, but I'm going to do them anyway. One is... God works in response to faith. In Hebrews 11.6, it says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Say that back with me. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, I want to say it again. I want you to emphasize the word impossible. Okay? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Now, when you pick up the phone and call 911, you are exercising faith in the 911 system, the dispatcher, and the police officer, sheriff's deputy, firefighters that are going to respond and come. You are expressing a certain amount of faith. God says, without faith in me, you're not going to get anything. Now, sometimes we put our faith in someone other than God when really we need the help from God. This lack of faith is a huge hindrance to God responding to your need. 
Now, God can overrule our faithlessness. He can, but He won't. He's not going to get you in a headlock and give you the noogies and say, you're, you're going to believe. <clears throat> he doesn't do that. He can overrule it, but He won't. How much faith does it take to satisfy God? Remember? He used an example. Mustard seed. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? I could fit like 50 of them on the end of my finger. So it doesn't take a lot, but it takes faith in Him. Okay? All right. Second reason is we have sin in our lives. The Bible says, David wrote this, If I regard sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard, if I play around with it, if I, instead of repenting of it, asking forgiveness, and doing away with it, I just keep, you know, I just keep it on the side here. I'll ask forgiveness, but not stop doing it. You know, I'll just keep asking forgiveness. He says, it, if you mess around like that, I'm not going to listen. So sin might keep you. you. You can't keep disobeying God and expect Him to bless you. Just think of yourself as a parent. How many times have you done this? Stop hitting your sister. Oh, you're still hitting your sister? Here, have some ice cream. We don't do that, do we? What do we do? Stop doing that. They don't stop. Punishment. Do what I tell you to do. I give you a reward. If we as human parents, as imperfect as we are, operate like that, have enough sense to do that, not reward bad behavior, but reward good behavior, how's God going to be? He is perfect. Third reason, he's teaching us to trust him. I don't know if any of you have ever lifted weights. I obviously have. A long time ago. <laughs> you don't stay with the five pound dumbbells, do you? Where are you going to get with the five pound dumbbells? Oh, I use the five, okay, now I'm going to upgrade to the 10 pound. Now I'm going to upgrade to the 20, now the 50, now the 100, whatever. In order to build the muscles, you have to keep increasing the weight. And God says, I'm going to build your faith muscle. When, you, when I can get you through, when you turn to me and, and you've got this little thing, and you put your faith in me, we deal with it. Now your faith is a little bit stronger. So I want, to, I want to add a little more weight to help build your faith. Trials and heartbreaks and all kinds of things out of our control that force us to turn to God help builds our faith. And it becomes stronger. Another reason he might not rescue us immediately is that because he knows best. You know, sometimes we just want out, right? I just want out. God, just take this away. Just get rid of this, that person that's, that's giving me a heart. That, Lord, please, just put me in a situation where, where this is all gone. Any of you ever wore braces? Okay, I did. Fifth grade, sixth grade. And about every other month, you know, this is before Invisalign. Okay, some of you, I know what some of you are thinking. Invisalign, dude, it's not good. No, back then, it had all these metal things on your teeth and these wires. I remember the day I got them on, there were wires hanging out and then they hit the clip. Well, anyway, about every other month, I had to go back to the orthodontist and get them tightened. Each one, individually. I had braces on the top and on the bottom. Oh, it hurt. Every time I went, I'd be like, man, just take these things off. But if they had taken them off when I wanted them to take them off, they wouldn't have reached the ultimate goal of my lovely, beautiful, pearly white teeth. And it's that way that some of the trials we're going through. God says, yeah, I got to tighten it up a little bit more. You know, the, I can see the end. I can see the ultimate of what I am trying to do here. And so we got to tighten it up a little bit. Well, I can't take it off or you're not going to have what I want for you to have in the end. In Romans 8.18, it says this. I consider our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. What I'm going through now, it means nothing compared to what God has planned for me because He knows best. Another reason He might not rescue us immediately is He is teaching us a lesson or refining our character. When you lose your job, you find out God is your provider. When you're experiencing sorrow, 
You find out God is your comforter. When you've been up all night with the baby, with an ear infection or colic or something, you learn patience and unselfishness. When you work with a jerk, you learn to see people as Jesus sees them. Instead of asking, why am I going through this? Try asking, what does he want me to learn? When we lived in Meadville, our first church, there was a time, I won't bore you with the details, um, but there was a time, several week period, where the church was not able to pay me. My big $75 a week salary. They were unable to pay me, no money. I did not have a second job. I had a baby in the house, Aaron, and we learned that God is our provider. I would go out in the morning and underneath the, wind, the windshield wiper of my car would be an envelope with $20 in it. One day I went to the mailbox and there was an envelope that had been mailed from Erie, PA, which is about 30 miles north of Meadville, with a dollar in it. The next week on the same day, it came with $2 in it. And it came with $4 in it. Next week it came with $18, or $8, and then it came with $16. And I started to do the math, and I thought by the end of the month, I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> but for whatever reason, reasons I don't understand, it stopped after $16. We made it through that time with no income. Didn't miss a single payment on our bill, and everything that came in, we gave at least 10% of it to the church. I know that God can and will provide. I learned that going through that difficult time. Since that, any time Mary and I have had any kind of uh, with money, we'll look at each other and go, remember Meadville? Don't worry about it. God's got it. Another reason he might not rescue us right away is so he can build our faith so that we can share with others. In 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. Here's the big words in this, these verses. So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. We most easily identify with somebody going through something similar to what we've been through. Or if we're having a hard time and somebody else says, you know what, I went through that and this is what God did for me. We understand that better. When you go through something difficult and God shows you and you can say to that person, this is what happened. You know, when somebody comes to me, referring back to the story I just told you uh, about what happened to us in Meadville. When somebody comes to me with money difficulties, I tell them that story. I say, look, here's what happened to us, and here's what we did, and here's what God did. Really? Yeah. So you understand? I do understand. I understand what it's like to have no income. And yet God took care of us. We identify when somebody else is going through sorrow. Yes, I, I, that same thing happened to me, I understand. You know, that's one of the reasons why I really try not to pass judgment when somebody comes to me and talks to me about an, uh, an addiction that they have. You know, it's so easy, it's a confession, it's so easy for me to say, well, just stop. But you know what? I've never been addicted to anything other than Mary's baking. I've, I've never smoked, I've never drank, I've never done drugs, I've never gambled. I don't know what it's like to have. So I, I do not condescend and say, well, you know, that's the first thought I have, but then I go, wait a minute, you don't understand what they're going through. I try and refer, you know, that's, that's what happened, that's how AA started, right? People who've been through it and have had victory over. Another reason why God might not rescue right away is he's about to do something amazing. 1 Corinthians 1, 9. Eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. 
hang on, God's ready to do something fabulous. Another reason he might not rescue right away is he's making you more like Jesus. Let's face it. When you go through a difficult time, don't you pray more? You read more, read the Bible more? You stop and meditate? Yeah. What, and you know, God says, okay, I want you to do this all the time. Then things get going good again. And we kind of, well, I don't need to do my devotions today. I, well, you know. God says, well, you know what? Maybe I need to just, you know, let something happen again. Because I want to make you more like Jesus. The more time you spend with God and in His Word, the more like Him you will become. And let me emphasize this. The opposite is also true. The less time you spend, the less you will be like Him. Finally, the last reason. God might not rescue you right away because He's teaching you that a close and personal relationship with Him is better than a trouble-free life. We all know it takes one phone call for your world to be turned upside down. Right? Whatever, whatever it is, we cry, we pray, we cry some more. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I have a few times in my life where I feel like the Lord just wraps his arms around me and says, don't worry, I got this. I got this. Don't worry about it. That might be one reason why he doesn't rescue us right away. Psalm 119, 71. It was good for me to be afflicted so I might learn your ways. That is written out of experience of stuff going bad. It was good for me to be afflicted so I might learn your ways. Now, I don't know about you, but I never want to volunteer for the sadness, the sorrow, the sickness. But God will use them to grow our faith if we let him. Philippians 3.8 says, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I might gain Christ. These are just a few reasons why God might not rescue us right away. I'm sure there are more. But this I'm also sure. God is good. God is just. God is powerful, and He loves me. Let's pray. None of us, Lord, goes through life without experiencing trouble, heartache, sorrow, sometimes because of our own actions, and sometimes we are really the victim of circumstances or somebody else's decisions. Please help us to understand that if you don't respond right away in the way we want, that because of your wisdom, your knowledge, your love, that it is the best for us. We'll never understand it in this life. We'll never understand it in this life. But someday we'll understand it all. Help us to stay true to you no matter what in Christ's name.